Welcome to KansasCityAfterHours.com, another great webisode where we are featuring another wonderful and talented and interesting person <laughs> who nice. just so happens to be a politician. <laughs> His name is Jason Kander. He is a state representative for the state of Missouri. Jason, welcome to the program. Thanks. For, and, uh, I, you know, I find, you, I find politicians very, I'm a political junkie. And that's okay. one of the reasons why All I right. wanted to have you on here. Not to, not to, you know, work you over. Well, I appreciate right. that. No, and, and, but I am, I am but, uh, but before we get into that, I, I found out some things about you. You are a veteran. I am, You yeah. did a tour over in Afghanistan. Uh -huh. uh, how did that experience change your life? Uh, it, it's defined it. I mean, for me, you know, the training of the Army, even before I deployed to Afghanistan, really, for me, created a philosophy that when you give somebody your word about something, obviously you're gonna live up, live up to it. When people are relying on you, it's absolutely imperative that you deliver. And then actually deploying and, and serving in a combat zone, for me, then going into politics afterwards, it, it made me take those things. What's worse? I'm sorry? What's worse, the politics oh, what's or, worse? or Afghanistan? You know, it's just, <laughs> people are shooting at you in totally different ways. Ah, I mean, yeah, so, so there's uh, a parallel, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's different in the sense that and I actually was the political military intelligence officer in okay. Afghanistan, so I learned a lot about local politics in the sense that uh, people are kind of the same everywhere politically. The only difference is, is really? now I go into a meeting and I know I'm probably not going to get kidnapped, and over there I had to worry about it. Oh, wow. Other than that, it's you kind of have the same sense. It's when you're having meetings with political people, you're gauging you know, how much of what they're telling me is spin, how much of what they're telling me isn't. So it's it was a good experience that way, good training. You're a Democrat, and, and a lot of people, uh, you know, you hear the whole left, right, liberal, mm -hmm. conservative, everybody on television arguing about this, that, or the other right. thing, but you served your country, and I mm -hmm. think a lot of people think that uh, if you serve your country, that that's a lot of time, well, he must be a Republican, yeah. because, you know, because the Republicans or yeah. people on the right are used to, you know, picking up the military and using that mm -hmm. as their political football, uh, so yeah. you... What do you say to that people like that? that there are people that ha come from everywhere that, that serve in the military, I right? actually, when I was in Afghanistan, uh, there was a congressional delegation that visited, and uh, it was a, a congressman from Illinois, and they knew that I was interested in politics, so when they came through, they would often say, okay, Lieutenant Kander, why don't you go sit with this guy? Uh, keep him entertained, tell him good stories, and so I would. <laughs> and, uh, and I sat with this guy, he was a Republican congressman from Illinois, and he asked me, you know, he kind of got into the politics. We don't usually do that in uniform, but mm -hmm. he asked me about it. And I said, well, I'm a Democrat. And he said, I don't understand. You're in the Army. And I said, um, Congressman, what do you not understand about it? And he said, well, there's no Democrats in the Army. Why are you a Democrat? And I said, well, I'm a Democrat for the same reason I'm in the Army. I believe that when we've been given quite a bit, quite a bit of good fortune, it's imperative that we make sure other people have the ability to reach their own potential as mm -hmm. well. That's why I'm a Democrat. That's why I'm in the Army. And I... Uh, and then he went ahead and he was a very nice guy. He took down my information, called my mom at home when he got back to the States and said, hey, he's doing well. But he, he told me he was not going to mention that he was a Republican congressman. So, <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, it's, there is this perception mm -hmm. that the military is all very conservative. And there is a certain culture about the military uh, that is a conservative culture. But in reality, you know, I listen to soldiers talk and I try not to have too many political conversations sure. in uniform, but I listen to soldiers talk. It's really pretty much down the middle, especially right. in the reserve component. Wow. Now, uh, you're, still, you're still in the National Guard. I am. Reserve, and uh, you're also a practice law mm -hmm. uh, for Barnes Law Firm, mm -hmm. and you're the state representative. How the hell do you hmm. find time to do everything? Plus, you're married. Yeah. <laughs> that, and, and trust me, that's a full-time job in and well, of itself. Honestly, that's how I find time to do everything. My wife and I really work as a team. Uh, she managed my campaign, for instance. Um, she's also an attorney. She's sharp. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she's she sharp. is. And uh, I mean, so really, the answer to that question is because I'm married, uh, and because neither of us apparently require much sleep, so we get quite a bit. <laughs> so don't require much sleep. So let me ask you this: the winds of change mm -hmm. are upon us mm -hmm. in this country, and. There's a lot of stuff going on, especially with the healthcare situation. Mm -hmm. uh, that train seems to be have left the station. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you looking at the next, you know, two, three, four years? Are you optimistic about where our country is headed, or are you, you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm very optimistic. There was a period where I was not. I mean, I'm a Democrat, Republicans controlled the country, pretty much every branch of government for several years. So obviously there was a period where I didn't think things were on the right track. Mm -hmm. And I don't only think things are on the right track because there was a switch in which party 
you know, is controlling most of the government. Yeah. It's not only that. Um, it's also because we have a leader, I believe in President Obama, but what I like most about President Obama is when everybody is saying, look, things are bad, let's batten down the hatches, let's kind of curl up and try and let it blow past, he's doing what American politicians have not done in, in, in a long time, which he's saying, no, this is the time to be bold and, and recognize that we have these large problems. And so instead of just trying to weather these large problems, let's try and fix these large problems on a more permanent basis. So I recognize that that's gonna cause a lot of a lot of people to, to be worried about the actions he takes because they're big actions, but I also recognize that it's a time when we really need bold actions. Final question um, before we let you get out of here. When people call you mm -hmm. that are from your district, mm -hmm. do you respond? Yeah, I actually answer my own email. Um, really? And I, I usually get people who are pretty excited to find out. that they, Most people I find think that they're going to get like a staffer or mm -hmm. an intern. Um, and a lot of times they do because sometimes I just can't well, get to it in time. I mean, yeah. right. But I do always respond personally, but what I find interesting about that is sometimes when people write to politicians, if they're writing about something they disagree with them about, it seems like since they think an intern is going to intercept the email, uh, they're far more harsh than they would be <laughs> if they knew that I was going to receive it. And so a lot of the time when I respond, and I, I respond very friendly, I say, well, I appreciate your point of view, here's why I did this. And, you know, please let me know. Does somebody like call you a douchebag or something in, uh, the, in the email? I mean, not that I remember specifically, but uh, <laughs> but some of the lines are not real nice. Uh, but what's funny is the second email they always send and go, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you actually read your own email." Wow. And, uh, and then they tell me, "Well, I'll probably vote for you, even though we disagree, because at least you responded to me." So. That's good. I mean, because yeah. you, you touch the people, and I think that's what the American people appreciate. Yeah. They want somebody that's like, "Look, I know you're a politician," mm -hmm. because there is an elitist attitude right. about people in politics, and so whenever you can make that touch point, I think that's that's good for you, no matter well, what party you represent. I got elected by knocking on everybody in my district store three times, so and I want to get reelected, so I recognize that I probably better be just as personable now as I was then. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Jason, it's it's a pleasure to meet yeah, and talk with you. Absolutely, I, I think Thanks hopefully very much. people out there will have you renew their faith oh, in I'm politics because there's some guys out there right yeah. now that we watch on television right now yeah. and it, it's hard to like politicians now, i right? understand well you know we try very hard to come across well on television yeah. but you know well i mean yeah <laughs> yeah like, and you did a great job oh uh, thanks even though this is not really who he is no i'm yeah. just kidding this I'm is my kidding. representative no absolutely <laughs> it's your persona hey. jason kander hey thanks very much state representative uh, state of missouri you're watching kansas city after hours